I'm here in the kitchen. Uh, Miss Dixon has a uh, gas range. She also has a gas oven. Uh, she has an exhaust fan here. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, what I have in my hand is a combustion analyzer. Uh, this combustion analyzer is measuring carbon monoxide is one of the most things I'm concerned about. I initially turned this meter on outdoors and then I came into the house to see if I picked up any carbon monoxide in the ambient uh, air in the house. I did not. Uh, so I'm going to kind of proceed with an inspection on the cook stove uh, and the uh, oven. Uh, a couple things uh, about doing a test. Um, I came in uh, yesterday. We initially looked at the house. We checked for gas leaks under the uh, on all the connections and the fittings. We didn't have any gas leaks. This is the first thing that we did. Uh, the oven, which I went ahead and turned on, and if you can see right here is the temperature. I turned it up to 500 degrees. That's what it's set to, and then that's what it's currently at. So the burner is on. And I want to get this up to what they call a, uh, where it's a steady or state where the carbon monoxide will usually build up when it first comes on and then a little level off. Uh, I went ahead and turned it on so we could, you know, as far as time goes. But in this oven, you can see these little air holes, these air vents. And the way a gas oven works, you know, whether it's in a wall unit like this or, or a standard one that you might see in the floor, is uh, the air comes up from underneath this. But these holes are blocked, and you may find that pretty common because a lot of folks put um, aluminum foil down here. And if those holes get plugged up, then there's not enough air that comes through there and you can get high carbon monoxide from that. And obviously before you turn the oven on, you want to make sure that there's not, you know, a lot of things stored in there, so you want to move those out. So what I've done is I went ahead and turned the oven on, and like I said, up to 500 degrees. Uh, this oven, the vent is actually right in here behind this little grill. Typically, if you can look over here on this range, most of the time, you know, you have a, a full-size range and the oven is under here and you have a little port in the back of here. And when we do our carbon monoxide test, we would stick it down in that port. For the oven in this case, I've got me a little probe that I can slide in here. So I'm going to leave the oven alone for a minute. I'm going to wait till, till it uh, levels out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and test one of the range burners. Now, the burners, uh, this is a, a newer uh, range burner. It has a, what's called spark ignition. The older ones had a pilot light that you had to light with the pilot, and uh, they tended to get a little dirtier. And, and, uh, but the things that you're looking for, especially on the older ones, these little ports, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. When you first turn it on, those little ports will get uh, blocked up. It should come on immediately. You know, you shouldn't have any hesitation in the flame at all. It should come on immediately. Uh, you can have carbon monoxide. Some of the things that, that, besides just being dirty, is these grates will actually get bent over time right here, and they'll actually what they call flame impingement. If the grate gets bent and touches the flame, you'll have kind of a yellow-looking flame. And when you have a yellow-looking flame, you're, you're getting carbon monoxide. You're getting unburned fuel. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to test the carbon monoxide over each one of these uh, burners. Uh, and the way most folks do it, they either use a combustion analyzer like I have here, or they'll have just a CO meter, which just measures carbon monoxide, which works fine. This is what they call an as-measured carbon monoxide test. We're just going to hold the probe over the, over the burner. Uh, what we're using now, because you know, some folks say, well, hold it 6 inches or, or 12 inches above the burner. And it's always kind of hard to do that consistently. Uh, some of you may know Rick Karg. He, he's done a lot of studies on uh, cook stoves. He has a thing that he uses called a hot pot. And we just kind of uh, took a little bit off of that. He has a little bowl that goes in the bottom of this. But what this is, is we can set this over the burner. Inside here, there's a little hook. I'm going to slide my probe through. And I can slide that through. And what that'll do is it kind of contains the, the flue gases or the, or the gases off the burner and it'll pass it past my uh, probe and then I'll do each one of those. I'd move from one to the other. Ideally we're looking for about less than 25 parts per million and you know if we're getting more than that then something may need adjustment or like I said the burner may be, uh, the grate may be bent into the burner. Uh, you can get more extensive testing. You can, like I was mentioned that the one Rick has you know, or shows on his website, it's got a little 
pot built into it where you can actually pour cold water into it because when you initially turn it on, you'll get a higher uh, carbon monoxide. But what I'm going to do is I've got this meter running. Hopefully you can, can you see that? And right here is reading uh, CO in what they call parts per million. And like I mentioned before, we were looking for less than 25. Currently we're at four. You know, I've had readings, you know, over 100 sometimes. And initially what will happen is this reading may go up and then it'll level off and start to come back down. And that's when you want to take your reading. And you would just do that for each one of the burners. I'm not going to do all of the burners, but you can kind of see the process uh, of that goes. And if, you want, if you're interested in this, we just took a stainless steel piece of pipe. Uh, Rick has, I think it's on his website, carg.com. So if you're interested in maybe making something similar to this, he has instructions on there how to do it. I'm going to turn this off, and then I'm going to get ready to test the oven. But the highest reading we got once it leveled off was 4. We tested all of these yesterday. They were all less than 25. And so the range actually tested out good. And again, like I say, once I've tested one, I would go to the other. That way the probe is held in the same location. Now, on the oven, the oven's up to 370 degrees. Uh, some folks will only go to 350. You know, it's kind of different protocols. I tend to go to 500 on my setting. That way it keeps the burner on for a longer period of time. The burner's not cycling, cutting on and off. And like I mentioned, that the vent for this oven is actually uh, right in here. Uh, I could use this monoxer. The monoxer only gives you a reading for carbon monoxide uh, as what they call as measured. Uh, if you use a combustion analyzer, it will also measure the oxygen and give you a measurement called air free, which is basically how much carbon monoxide would be, you know, in the gases if you eliminated the oxygen from that. Because sometimes you might have one oven that has a percentage of oxygen that's 12 percent and one that's 16 percent. So it basically just puts it on a level, level playing field so you get an idea of, of the actual uh, carbon monoxide level. And what I ended up doing was because if I use my combustion analyzer probe, it won't fit in, it won't fit in the port here. So what I ended up doing was taking the probe off my other gauge. And I'm going to put it in here, but this way it will still allow me to measure carbon monoxide and the oxygen level. So what I ended up doing here was just taking off where the filter goes to my combustion analyzer, taking, hooking that right here to the filter. So now it's pulling in those gases and I can measure the oxygen level and the carbon monoxide level on the same gauge. And you'll, this will start to change once it's uh, going up. We actually got pretty low levels on this yesterday, but it's not uncommon to get, you know, uh, over 100 parts per million, which is kind of a standard where most ovens, most programs are looking for less than 100 parts per million. Typically when you first turn it on, it'll go up high and then come down. Uh, this one, you know, it's going up around 20, which is excellent, you know, for an oven. Uh, the oxygen is around 16%. Uh, what's called the air-free. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we can do an air-free measurement, and CO air-free is, again, what the CO level would be without the oxygen. One last thing on the uh, oven here is this range. It's vented. So, but it's only vented to the living space. It's not vented to the outdoors. It just blows the grease right back in your face. We actually call these a zit fan because <laughs> it just puts the grease right back on your face. But what we would end up doing with this, because this is basically like an unvented uh, heating appliance, and sometimes when we go into weatherization, that's what they're actually using for their heat. But what we would want to do with this is just have a venting system. We would go right up through this cabinet, up through the attic, and out the roof. So that's a pretty common thing. If we go into a house that doesn't have a, a exhaust that's been into the outdoors, then we'll have to install that. So when that appliance is running, and even after it's ran, because we're tightening the house up, we want to make sure they use that exhaust fan to pull out those, any of those carbon monoxide gases. It's really important when we get a house real